all of you. Hello, everyone. This is the Purple Portal that you are listening to, and I am Elaine Bartlett. I am still remote, which is so funny. I'm not remote where I am, but I'm remote from the radio station down at Merritt Island. So I am still up in New Jersey. I do feel like the woman who came to dinner as a takeoff from the man who came to dinner. I have... I thought I was sent up here for about 10 days to two weeks. I will be soon approaching two months. And, yes, it's getting time now where it's I've done what I was sent to do, and I did it to the best of my ability, 150%, giving love into some streams of consciousness that were dried up and parched and very thirsty for some for some honest, integrity-filled concern and compassion. So hopefully I've touched every life I've needed to touch, and I do think within the next 7 to 10 days I can head back home to my lovely, beautiful area in South Florida. But in the meantime, we are today, we've got a lot to talk about. You can't call in because it is remote, If you need to contact me, I suggest you do it one of two ways. While I'm in New Jersey, 321-210-6582. 321-210-6582. It won't do you any good to try to reach me for the next hour on that line because I'm using it. So make a note if you need to reach me, that's it. I would also encourage you, take a good look at my website, Higher Consciousness, H-I-E-R-C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S-N-E-S-S, higherconsciousness.com. You know, my book, um, The Prosperity Portal, is on there. In its simplicity, I know some people kind of dismiss it because, oh, it's so simple. But I guarantee you, I didn't write it. It came through me. And messages that are for your highest good are absolutely, exquisitely simple. And there's layers to each and every one or two lines in that book. And it's a book that you really don't read. I get a little cuckoo when somebody tells me they read the book. No, it's a lifer. Because you could open to the same thing many days in a row And it's got a completely different frequency for you. The material that's going to come forth in the future that's worth its weight in gold will be frequency material, whether it be books that are a higher frequency, healings that are a higher frequency, color therapy, sound therapy. It's all going to be very, very high-pitched energy fields for a small slice of the population. And I say that because as I'm up in New Jersey, pouring out information that is a very high frequency, I can tell you it's been very fascinating to watch. If I line up 100 people, 10 maybe 15, maybe 18, can tap into the frequency. The others must go the traditional way, the traditional Western medicine, traditional ancient, not I wish it were ancient, traditional healing systems that are pretty destructive. They will not see the value of drinking pure water or eating um, holistically and healthfully and selecting products carefully, mindfully, that are organic, that are sometimes gluten-free, the gluten is so toxic, that are living food, living food that helps you. So still 80 to 83% or more of the population has a great disdain for that message. They're still anxious to silence people like myself. We know not what we're doing. So it's a diminished kind of thing. And guess what? The truth is, 
we actually do know what we're doing, and our message has been very valid for as long as I've been in the body, which is a long time. And I've been sharing with a couple of people the sensation that I've experienced since I took a body in the 40s that, gee, um, yes, I'm blonde and fair and delicate, and yeah, pretty darn lovely, and that's all been pretty despised and despicable. And now I'm standing more and more with more clarity and more certitude that, wait a second, I brought forth great gifts for people. The problem is, mostly, they have ears and they cannot hear. So in their deafness and dumbness, and I don't mean intellectually dumb because some of them pride themselves on their great intellect, but dumb in spirit, they can't hear. But those that can, those that can, that's now, with greater force and focus, that's who I'm showing up for. And those people, their lives are being transformed. Those few that I can now touch, the transformation is mind-boggling and and humbling and delightful. So change is happening. And, of course, two days ago, we actually stepped into Dog Month. That's the third month of autumn and the final month of autumn energetically, as I've said many, many times in feng shui, it's the third month. And Chinese um, practitioners of acupuncture resonate with that very much because now it's a combination of the whole stomach and digestive process being potentially compromised along with the lung system, the whole breathing and respiratory system because it's undergoing a shift. So it's being recalibrated, reshifted. So don't get too concerned about the recalibration. Let it happen because it's happening for your highest good. And in this time for shift, I've been speaking with with my beloved Jeff, who owns the radio station, and we've had some very heartfelt conversations for the past few weeks. It's time for Jeff to make a shift with the radio station. And when he spoke that to me a few weeks ago, yes, I was a bit bittersweet, but I also felt almost a sense of, okay, we've done it. And and I really wanted to give him a great high five because I knew the gift that Jeff has given me with the opportunity to share some very thought-provoking concepts with those of you who could listen. And it gave me the opportunity to find my voice and no longer be afraid of expressing my belief systems and my understandings. It's taken me a long time to hone the, the, the sweetness out of everything I've, I've had to learn. So what's happening with Jeff, it's time for him to move on to bigger and better expressions of creativity. Therefore, Jeff has sold the radio station. And you know what? That gives me a doorway, passageway, a portal into new opportunities. And those of you who have been so kind and generous with your time and sharing it with me, first of all, I thank you. It's a big commitment to listen to somebody for an hour a week. So thank you for that from the bottom of my heart. And hopefully we've grown together. Many of you have, you know, mentioned that, that you heard something and it, it changed something in your life and a perspective and a, a way of seeing things. So for those of you who have listened, as much as Jeff is opening to new and broader portals, Therefore, I am. Therefore, you are. So the gift is enormous. And isn't it interesting that under this month of transition and transformation, the change is being made. I'm going to be on the air still for a couple of more weeks. And then 
I'll, t- I'll tell you when it's over, just as clearly as I will be telling the people in New Jersey, got to go. So it's all a wonderful transformation time, and it is time for shift. Shift happens. And I encourage every one of you to really look carefully. What is it that you are now to be putting down? Mostly, I would tell you it's your fears, simply because from a feng shui point of view, that number one star that holds the frequency for fear is in the center box, meaning it's in the center of your body. It's in the center of your consciousness. What are you afraid to put down? What is it that you're holding on to? very interesting piece of work came to me up here by the mother of the woman who actually (laughs) I full-on hold lovingly responsible for getting me up here in the first place, the woman that told me she was hopeless and that Western medicine could no longer help her and I was her last hope. That's the only reason I got up here. That word hopeless made me act immediately. Well, that woman's mother came for to try my new um, healing device, which changes frequencies. And that mother said to me, oh, have you ever heard of a book called When God Was a Woman? Mm -mm, No, I had not heard of that. And this book was published in the 70s. She didn't tell me that, but I've since discovered that. She said, oh, you would love that book. And I made note of it and made note to, cop, to uh, you know, try to go on Amazon and find it. Next thing I know, my beloved friend, who is no longer hopeless, she's the essence of good health, she came one day and delivered a copy of the book because her mother said, here, it's yours now. Well, this book, uh, for any of you that feel you are ready to drop further paradigms, further conditioning, further programming, particularly women, gee, I would so encourage you to find a copy of this. The author's name is Merlin Stone. It is so well documented. It is so authentic. The preface itself, changed my life yet again. And many of you know, for the past several years, that word, mant- that mantra, drop it, is paramount in my consciousness because I've been dropping everything, dropping a consciousness of who's right or wrong in an election, who's right or wrong in anything, well, religions, drop it, drop it, drop it. Well, this takes it yet another step. And this has you look clearly at not only who wrote the Bible, when was it written, and the extraordinary fallacies in it. And I know that's heresy to some of you, but I encourage you to follow what this woman has researched for 10 years, and you feel out the truth of it, and it will change your life. Because when God was a woman... The world was ruled with a consciousness of compassion, non-aggression, great strength, but not this aggressive competitiveness, not this ego-centered, gimme-got-me attitude, not this warlike existence that now we take, we take it for granted. Well, I don't, and I haven't for years and years. I'm going to kind of finally openly admit I didn't believe one bit in Vietnam. I thought that was completely bogus. And how dare we murder the best of our young men. And you know what? If you dig deep enough, dang it, that's the truth. That whole thing was a setup. So we've been so set up to buy into all this insanity. I don't want my grandson harmed, murdering someone else. And I don't want him harmed. It's insane. So I look forward to the consciousness of peaceful existence, non-aggression, 
compassion, which if women would get back to their essence, which I'm a little concerned about their aggression at this point, but if, if we would all get back to that essence, core of who we are, of love and and ever shining oneness, how could we hurt each other? That we'd have to put it down. Or we would have to revolt in such a way. You don't know where your tax dollars are going and what ammunition that's buying to kill the next person. So we'd start getting more information. And I know that hurts a lot of you that can't bear to listen to this. Well, when it's your time, gosh, I'll be happy that you can wake up. And if it isn't your time to wake up, then honestly, I've got other things to do. I want to deal with those that are waking up, those that are able to hear, no longer afraid to see, no longer afraid to speak up for that sense of oneness. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. The wheels now, the wheels of the gods, they're turning. And it's very interesting. There's been, that's very, one of the things that I was shown that was like, wow, there has been a sense of the, excuse me, the dimensional grids. So these are um, grid systems of which your consciousness is not particularly aware. They're grid systems, though, that are energetic and etheric in nature. They're all fortified now. And now starships are entering what we call the Ultra D, for David, gateways. And finally, humans begin to flourish. And those would be the humans that are changing their nutrition, reading the label, staying attuned to their sense of light within. Those are the humans that really don't fit in anywhere anymore. Those are the humans that can no longer bow to um, a false sense of security, called your government. No, you can't bow to that. You'll look to yourself for the sense of safety and security. So it's a very interesting Humans begin to flourish. Not a lot, but some. So I'm going to ask you very carefully and very forcefully, would you please listen to what you are saying? Because what you're saying is really harming you. And I don't care whether you are on a platform of something you think is good. For example... You might be a little bit defensive. Well, no. You've put a label on yourself in in supposedly a positive way. Oh, I'm so analytical. I'm very analytical. I can't can't buy into someone like you who is very um, ethereal and not analytical. Okay? Be careful. You're putting a label on yourself, and your energy is going into that, and your energy is now in lockdown because you've labeled yourself. Let go of a label. Analytical is neither good nor bad. It's a facet of how your mind is operating. Don't be so proud of this stuff. Because now I'm seeing it's not helpful for you at all. And you'd want to know, where is your energy going? But people aren't awake enough to ask that question. But I'm asking it with you and for you. Where is your energy going when you say something like that? Defensively of who you are, thinking it's a badge of honor. Mm -mm. Where's that energy going? It's going into a really thick, dense, gooey, almost like mucus-like force that's surrounding the entire earth, preventing the light from coming or going. Don't you see why I want you to drop all your stuff? You're feeding your own demise in the worst possible way. Labeling is a dissipation of your energy. So 
any fixation, anything you're attached to, it's mental chatter. It's mental discourse, disease of the worst kind, and a total dissipation of your energy. And you're going to wonder why you have no energy at the end of the day? It's because your energy ran amok. And I want you to be so conscious of labels, not only that you're putting on yourself, that you've taken pride in. If you have pride in any label, I guarantee it's harming you. Anything. And if you have a label against someone else, it's doing the same amount of damage because there is no one else. It's a mirror image of you. So put that down too. Take a better look. We've got a lot of stuff cooking. All right, that's so much for that sermonette that I always promise myself I won't be doing. I would like to throw out, in case she's listening, a most blessed, happy celebration, New Beginnings Day, to a person that I (laughs) mention often on the air, my beloved Renee. Renee came in on a 1010 frequency. Those zeros, they've activated her. That will allow, allow her the freedom of wholeness and completeness and to help bring others to that sense of wholeness and actual freedom in the long run. And Renee is making enormous transitions with her physical temple this past year. So Renee gets to celebrate a new beginnings day like she hasn't had for her entire lifetime. So happy new beginnings day, my friend, and to anyone else who has the good fortune of coming in on a day that ends with a zero, 10, 20, or 30. You are all doing very unusual work. Anytime you see that cipher of zero at the end of a number, wahoo! It shows different realities of time and space that you have moved through and now bring fuller messages to humankind. Before it goes out of my consciousness, I will tell you, because we are nine days away from the arrival of Lakshmi. That is the new moon in October, and that is when Lakshmi makes her entrance this year. Lakshmi, as you know, is the goddess of fertility, number one. So, for Jeff and myself, we're we're having a transition and a shift which would seem like something's closing. No, in the midst of Jeff closing down the radio station, we both have Lakshmi coming, which is fertility. So seeds are going to be sown. So I hope Jeff is comfortable being pregnant. because That's what's happening. We will be impregnated around the 19th. So... For those of you who know the Lakshmi drill, the Lakshmi ritual, it is the festival of lights. It is that cycle where light up your life again. So you got a lot of work to do between now and the 19th. You, you who know the drill know that you've got to clean within an inch of your life. And I do smile because Jeff was telling me before the show He had such an impulse and an urge to clean out the entire station. Well, that's why he's subliminally getting ready for beloved Lakshmi that he did share with me. I I had given him a Lakshmi statue, and he shared with me. It's like he can't seem to get out of her gaze, and that makes me extremely happy because it means that he's under the watchful eye of Lakshmi. So pull out your Lakshmi statues, everyone, Allow her gaze to fall upon you with great compassion, great love, and great pregnancy. So again, for those of you who have had the fortitude to keep listening to me through the year, I think we're all going to be pregnant together, and what a lovely thing. So we got Lakshmi coming, and now I just do want to share a little bit about what's happened with the flying stars, because I do think it will be helpful to pay a little bit of attention from a feng shui point of view about the energy shift because it is the month of shift. 
So what's happened now in October, the nine star has moved into the center box. So if you will, fire, nine is fire, is moved on top of water. And what that means is water tends to put out the fire. Fire is energy. You want to be careful that the sloshiness of your emotions, your fears, mostly fears, it's not even so much anxiety, it's fear, does not put out your your enthusiasm and your energy. And the way to do that actually is think green, lots of green, eat green vegetables, have your beans, have your string beans, have your asparagus, take a walk in the woods. Woods are green. Even if the leaves are falling off, wood is wood. So you need more wood. You want to be careful not to put out the fire with alcohol this month. Alcohol will not be your friend. Neither will drugs. And this is odd. They, that's interesting. They popped in with neither will too much sex. And why would that be? Sex actually transmits fuel, uh, fluids in your body. So too much sex will actually dim your enthusiasm. So moderation in that area, or perhaps it's even a month to go very slow or abstain, but be careful, careful of all those three things. Very interesting how it all ties in together. Um, they really want, they really want me to put this out there too. Something about sex. Um, I'm not sure who needs to hear this message, but this would be one of those months where being, um, indiscriminate sexually would definitely come back to bite you because of the exchange of fluids. And you, this would be the kind of month where you could pick up a sexually transmitted disease. So someone actually needs to hear that. Okay? So take that, take that under advisement. We've also got lots of, what, what it, what happened here is because nine went into the middle, it put the five star, which is disruption, it actually puts the five star onto the house of career which is kind of amusing, again, you know, when I think of what's happening at the radio station. So career could definitely be disrupted this, this month with people losing their jobs, being fired. And I'm going to tell you, embrace it. Don't be fearful. Don't, don't let the fear catch up with you. When God closes a door, she opens a window. Yes, she does. So hang on to that. If you are overly fearful during a shift such as is potentially here for us in the month of October, and this does not let up until November 6th, this could give you, now this would go, well, it goes two ways. Hmm, interesting what they're showing me. It goes two ways. For you women, this could give some um, bladder infections or uterus infections, okay? And for men, it could give some prostate issues. For both sexes, lots and lots and lots of water and, and put the fear down. It's also going to give a sense of, um, hmm, for those of you who are southeast energy, it can bring you an influx of money. That's a good thing. So what I want to do, I want to actually try to make a correction in your homes. This will be helpful for you. I'm going to suggest you put a plant somewhere in the middle of your house. A plant is wood, a green plant. And I'm going to say, if you can find a piece of bamboo, get a, get a bamboo shoot and put it in the middle of your house. It's very interesting. Some wonderful gal brought me a bamboo living plant when I first got here, and it happens to be right in the middle of the lo lovely room that I'm staying in. And it's very helpful. <laughs> so wood goes in the center to stabilize that a bit. 
And it's too bad because I can only imagine some of you would like to call in and go, what, really, where should it, but is that enough and do I have this? Sorry, because I'm remote, you just can't call in. But later on, if you wish to call and ask me directly, go for it. And then I want to make a correction in the north as well. So we've got, what's happened here is we've got big earth in water, and water floods the earth. And, and so it's not a very happy situation. So for those of you who understand what I'm saying, add metal into the north. So that would be some a wind, move your little wind chime for this month only. Write yourself a little note on November 6th to take it out of the north. But I would put it in the north. Get a little wind chime there. Move your clock over there. Something on, along that line. So those are my big feng shui. Hmm. Yeah, that's about it. Do I want to do something else? Yeah, I do. I want to say in the west as well. I would put some metal this month. So you got two pa pockets of metal in the west and in the north. And for those of you who go, but it's in the northwest. No, I'm not talking northwest. I'm talking west and I'm talking north. Go for it. Put a little clock in either of those places. and But they both need an adjustment. So a clock, a wind chime. Oh, a little metal ringy-dingy. Some of you have some little metal feng shui cures. That would help you enormously. In the center box, for those of you who have any of the sacred talismans, a Lakshmi stat statue, the um, medicine Buddha, angelic presences, a Buddha, the Christed figure. Putting them in the center of your home at this time is helpful also. And that will help ground you. What I have seen in the Northeast, I don't see it as much in Florida, but it's almost an epidemic up here. Left and right, people come in to use my new medical tool, my healing tool, and one of the first things they say is, what can I do about anxiety? The level of anxiety up here is off the charts. I, I, at times I have to step away from it because it's hard to breathe in it. It's so massive. So by grounding yourselves with something, you see, when it's in the center of the house, it grounds the center of yourself. And that's what we're really after. So those things are happening, and there we have that. And now I'm going to take a deep breath and drink of water. And I'm going to talk about one of the gene keys. Many of you have the book, The Gene Keys, and the number 57 is actually in, in motion from October 8th to October 14th. So it's a vibration, it's a frequency. And I think this will help some of you understand about the frequencies. What's happening now is a frequency that's triggering a sense of being a victim of indecision. And so all of that has a chance to be cleared at this time. One of the easiest things to do about indecision is to embrace it you know people have been asking me now for three weeks when are you going home that could trigger a terrible sense of indecision which then creates an energy leak thankfully i stood very clearly in my not knowingness and very calmly and the answer is always when i'm directed to go home so there's really no indecision times i get a little pang Oh, maybe, but I haven't really quite heard just yet. But trust me, signs are coming, signals are coming. So so I've avoided that booby trap of indecision. But here's the two polarities 
of that booby trap. One is you're overly hesitant. And that is as dangerous as the other side of the polarity, which is impetuous. So some which way that pendulum has to stop swinging because hesitancy, you know, there's a phrase, he who hesitates is lost. Well, I bought into that a lot as a child and then became overly impetuous. Now, there's the discernment of let me perhaps consider it, but you don't need to consider. Depending on the caliber of something and you learning to get in touch with your own higher self, you don't need to be reconsidering a a million, million times. When I was directed and full-on guided to hop in the car and get to New Jersey ASAP, that was not impetuous. I full-on heard the direction, and because I was so centered, took it and started packing, and bingo, I arrived. But if I had hesitated, oh my gosh, let me think about this, let me consult my astrological stuff, Let me talk to this one, that one, and that one. What do you think? Which, I will remind you, is always disastrous because no one's in your shoes. So whatever they think is bogus for you anyway. But a lot of people lose a lot of energy just that way. You know what to think. You just have to be still enough to get there. So either way, there's this whole indecision thing that's upon us from October 8th to October 14th, and that's a lot of the Libra energy. Libra happens to be the worrying sign of the zodiac in Western astrology. So Libras tend to overdo it and overthink and procrastinate, and then nothing happens. Or then they've missed the window of opportunity, then they're frustrated that they missed that window, and then they jump impulsively and impetuously into the wrong <laughs> into the wrong situation. So that's what's happening right now. And in the gene keys, every time a human being unlocks the secret of enlightenment, they discover the philosopher's stone. Each time it happens, the whole world is loosened somewhat. All matter is interconnected throughout the universe. That's a quote from the 57th Gene Key. Every planet, every rock, every life form is a part of the ocean of matter. Kama, matar, M-A-T-E-R, the mother, the mother energy. So there's going to be a resurgence of the mother energy goddess energy, I guarantee it. Now, I'm going to go back to what I just quoted from them. Every time you unlock a secret of enlightenment, I'm going to tell you what that secret is. And there's there's frequencies that allow you greater, it's like lock upon lock upon lock, So you unlock that one and you unlock that one. What these locks are, you you and I have been in lockdown for centuries seeking enlightenment. Well, when you unlock the secret of enlightenment, you finally understand there's nothing to seek. And I have said this now consistently for months. And you begin to understand If there's nothing to seek, you are that. You are enlightenment. You are the light made manifest. You are non-conceptual. You don't have a concept. That's why I spent the first several minutes of today's talk telling you, helping you, drop the labels, drop the concept. You are non-conceptual conceptual. How can you hold a concept about yourself when you are not that? You are ever fresh. In this moment, you are ever fresh. 
So whoever you were 10 minutes ago, it's already stale and done and over. You are self-shining always in every instant. You are presence awareness. Just this and nothing else. And that's the secret of enlightenment. Now, as I walk that, I can tell you from the walking, 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 there are days, there are moments, there are hours where once again it almost seems obscured and I've got to go right back into the deep, concentrated discipline of getting into it again. You know, I didn't get out of it, but my I have to drop all the gook that slimed me, that cooked me up. So I don't know whether it's a concept that I wrapped around me, you know, perhaps not feeling at the top of my game, but what I'm seeing with the device that I have been sharing up here, I have seen it opening its portals to me, and it's actually helping me open up further and further into who I am. And I know this device I never, never in its in the things that I've studied with it, the people I hear talk about it, the classes I've attended, they can only talk about it's designed to help you go through some physical healing, which indeed it does. But as I work quietly with it, no, and I'm going to be speaking about that very gently, very calmly as time goes on. And as time goes on, I actually hope to share it with the company because I I understand it. With the, with the background that I've done, I get what this can do for us. And so each time you and I drop some of our concepts, and move back into that sense of knowingness of our own enlightenment, the whole world is loosened ever so slightly. That to me is huge. That to me is why I'm speaking to you today. Yes, it's, it's nice that you can put the feng shui stuff around. What I have just spoken to you is the crux of today. Just as clearly as your long-held belief systems and programming and conditioning has created a darkness on this planet, just as surely and certainly as you begin to step into your enlightenment, every time you do that, It's as if you poke holes in that darkness and the light shines through. As if finally it's been a black, black sky and a star is poking through. And you and I are going to be the new star makers. We're going to allow the star within ourself to shine. So we're going to poke through the density. And that will All that density will be loosened, and the entire world will be shifted. Not only that, I know how energy works. For gosh sake, I've been studying this stuff since the 70s. If I haven't got it by now, it wouldn't happen. But I got it. I know the interconnection of energy. And really, that's why I wanted to do this show for this past year. I understand that my frequency can kindle something somewhere in someone who's listening and they in turn can kindle something somewhere because the universe wants to be healed. I want to be healed. I want to get back to the core of me that needs no healing. I know that can happen. I know that's what I'm working on. And as I get it, I become that sun. I no longer have to reflect it. I'm it. 
and under the law of one, that's why I've been so devoted to my oneness slash your oneness because you are the other me. That's why war is not a good idea. That's why I tell you war is against human nature. Real nature. It's got a preface to nature. It's called Mother Nature. Hello? It's not called Father Nature. It's called Mother Nature. It's about that sense of thou shalt do no harm. That's why I get crazed with Western medicine that has often run amok with big pharma that has run amok with greed, with our military. What do we have to protect? A mother loves her children. Come on. Come on. Do you see in these final days of my radio work how passionate I am about me mothering me, you mother you, mother nature's mothering us. There's no harm here. There's only flourishing. There's only a shift of consciousness. It's time. I've been shown again and again. I will tell you, reluctantly, I must say, on my part, that there's been a paradigm shift. I've spoken of it for years. Honestly, I didn't get it, but I get it now. I got it. It's done. It's happening. And it's going to take those of us who are conscious, who have been given the gift of waking up, to stand very clearly in it, unafraid, unafraid of anything. And that's what I want to pass along to you who are valiant, you who are brave, you who are done with your old conditioning. Maybe it served us. You know, feng shui served me 10 years ago. It doesn't serve me as much now. I honor it. I honor it because it will continue to bring some people. It will bring the next wave of people where they need to go. And then they will step into the wave that I've stepped on. And then it will go backward in time and heal the next wave. So they're all wonderful healing tools. You just have to examine, where are you? Where are you in your awakening journey? So I can tell you, there will be some agitation for many of you this month. I spoke with my beloved Marianne today at lunchtime, and we both concurred. Yep, we're feeling a bit agitated a bit uneasy. Well, it's because we have to pay more attention to the initiation that's going on, and that's what it is. An initiation is a portal. It's an opening. And it's an opening to our further awakening to who we are. It's further. It's a further opportunity to gain greater and greater clarity about the fact that I am that, and you are that, and that's all there is, and that's that. So this is a time of feeling your way gently. Be soft. I can't, I can't tell you enough about how important it is to be soft at this time. Be soft with yourself. The I Ching counsels. Gentle, gentle, gentle. And in this time, this is what will occur to us all. The fabric of the material realm will dissolve and reveal its higher truth. And the truth is, it's concerning our own immortality. So that's partially why Things must disintegrate. They must deteriorate. People must leave their body 
that can't can't hear right now. Don't hold them here. This is a new world we're stepping into. It's a new frequency. Hold hands. Step with joy. But you're not going to step anywhere clinging to your old self, clinging to who you thought you were. And the more you thought of yourself, the more you've got to drop. The more, probably the more degrees you've got, drop it. The more hurt you've got, drop it. I was listening to a wonderful little insight by the president of Uruguay. Some of you should YouTube what he had to say. What a fearless, courageous man. He's dropped everything. He was imprisoned. He's been beaten. Everything's been taken from him. This man is a man I'd like to meet because he's dropped it all. Uruguay doesn't have a presidential jet or a whole fleet of presidential jets. Uruguay has a very sophisticated medical helicopter for people that are uh, harmed. That's their their presidential jet, a medical helicopter for people who are in jeopardy. Gee, what a concept. What a concept for the United States. Go forward. Drop it all. I'm with you. I'm loving you. I see who you are. And dang it, I'm holding to that. You are that, and I am.